Nangal, the city of smoke. Like our last siege at Nuln, this bastion of the northern provinces is the heart of Grand Cathay's war efforts, brimming with foundries and internally shrouded in the smog of its manufactorums. But every once in a while, a divine wind blows through and clears the skies, long enough for its defenders to see a demonic invasion manifest outside its walls. The city has never been captured or sacked, though a great many wars have been waged in its shadow, and today will be yet another test for the dragon siblings Miao Ying and Zhao Ming, because the Raven and the Crow have put aside their petty squabbling, and the armies of Plague and Polymerization are on the prowl. Have Nurgle and Zinch activated Cathay's trap card, or will this be the final resting place of Storm and Iron? Find out this episode on Dragon Balls. This is not a custom siege map, but I'd venture to guess many of you have never seen a large-scale battle played on it anyway, because while the Great Bastion itself is scripted to have USAX and a bunch of ag holes attack its walls, Nangao has a garrison and fortifications that ensure it rarely falls under assault in campaign. But here, with Duke's Damnations, we've got 11,000 troops all battling for control of this vital military and industrial power. PD the Power Dragon commands the Apostles of Change under the towering form of Kairos Fateweaver, Knights of Emulation and Doom Knights on disc providing aerial support. And with the Hallelujah Mountains floating in the background, that slow, inexorable grind of Nurgle's war machines will make its way to the walls of ancient Jericho. Cheth is in command of the Cult of the Septic Claw, while Duke controls the Western provinces of Zhao Ming, fresh in to reinforce his sister, and some Portuguese Bean leads the northern provinces of Miao Ying. Mother Miaoist is on the eastern side of the city, fighting Nurgle, while Zhao Ming will defend the west against the forces of Zeech. Snail trails and a nasty-ass playgram making their way to the gatehouse right now. Marauders, cultists, and all sorts of disgusting abominations making their way over as well. They are led by a Chaos Sorcerer Lord, top of Chaos War Shrine, Stream of Corruption, and Blight Boil, and some Gigantor Chaos Spawn. So we're just gonna jump right in. Zinch will be first onto the breach. Severed Claw Halberds are already at the gate. A host of Chaos Warriors about to disembark on the walls above. Kairos, right hand of the Changer, looking to smack Zhao Ming with some magic missiles. Remember, in Duke's mod, duels between characters are more deadly. Lords and heroes have less HP, but attack much faster. Missiles are more support-oriented and less accurate. Magic takes longer to wind up, meaning you can dodge spells more effectively, and in some cases, they deal less damage as well. Miao Ying is on the eastern side of the city, defending her own home turf with help from a few unique units that you'll only see in this mod. Talk about those as they come up, but as I said, the map itself, the city of Nangao, is not modded, and it's certainly a gorgeous playing space for our champions here. Lots of kill boxes, elevated platforms, and room for a layered defense. So, already, Zinch Cultist Marauders on the ramparts, disembarking from their siege towers and engaging peasant long spears. Don't expect the peasants to be able to hold for too long there, especially with Kairos Fateweaver providing demonic support so close by, but Archers are firing in, starting to whittle down on that barrier. Exalted Pink Horrors shooting over the top of the walls, and we've got the Elite of Zinch plunging in first. So, as is kind of common with Sieges in Warhammer 3, the initial engagements will mostly just be a holding strategy from the defenders. Typically don't want to commit your best troops to the walls right from the jump. Both Cathay players will keep those in reserve near the capture points, and for now, probably content themselves to chip away at those Protoss overshields tire the Chaos Warriors out, and plunk them down with arrows. Important thing to keep in mind, while those Vigor-related strategies might work on mortals to an extent, it will not work on demons. All demonic entities have the Rest and Hell passive, which means they will not grow tired. Zinch's Firestorm in this first choke point, and those tornadoes are going to bounce off the walls quite a few times, actually, and make it through the Jade Archer. So there's a Jade Archer unit. I think there are still crossbows. The Shangyong Repeaters are one of Zhao Ming's unique units. The Defenders of Nan Gao are essentially crane gunners, but instead of crane guns, they have pikes. So they're using the same animations, but they're using long spears over the top of the shields instead. So they're a melee unit, very stalwart in defense. We'll be seeing them soon. Nurgle is through the gatehouse, Chaos Spawn leading the way. Chaos War Shrine directly behind them, and that Chaos Sorcerer Lord is gonna be a problem in these choke points. Blight Boil and Stream of Corruption, both really good spells for countering the Cathay Blobs. Of course, he also has that passive AoE heal and Fleshy Abundance, one of the best AoE heals in the game. So expect a lot of troops to be heal capped before this battle is all said and done. By the way, you might've already seen it, but that timer 
or rather the length of the video should indicate that this is a long one. It might be 40 plus minutes, although there might be a few edits to shorten it a little bit. Constellation of the Dragon coming in and absolutely eviscerating a huge section of Zinch Marauders. We will be seeing that spell a lot from Zhao Ming this game because in these naturally deadly choke points, it'll be likely that the attackers will get grouped up. And that is when those powerful AoE spells can come into play and really slam home, smack some dudes around. As we know though, offensive magic against Zinch typically isn't as impactful as it might be against the Skaven or some of those low HP, high entity model count factions, simply because they've got the barrier to block a lot of that spell damage initially. And these peasant archers and the rest of the ranged troops, we're not gonna be seeing crazy burst damage if they get point blank volleys into chaos spawn or into the Zongors, Pestigors, those kinds of things. And their blue fire change coming out from Kairos Fateweaver sent towards the dragon, but actually dodged as he shifted into his metamorphosized form. But yeah, as has long kind of been a debate in the Warhammer community and Total War in general, the question whether peasant archers or lower tier foot troops with a lot of bows should be able to delete monsters and single entities in the way that they currently do in vanilla. It's not really how ranged troops work here, but you still want to make sure you shut them down as soon as possible because they will debuff you and they will chip away at that health over time. So plague drones are coming over the walls, going right for the jade archers and crossbowmen in the second and third ranks, looking especially fetid and disgusting today. Chaos spawn, those things are straight up abominations in Duke's Damnations. They're like triple the size they are in the base game, which is funny because it's true for Nurgle, but it's not true for Zinch. They're like half the size of Vanilla Chaos spawn and we'll be seeing them over on the Western side soon enough. These are the defenders of Nangao. You can see they're using the same animations, but in melee, they're not crane guns, they're pikes, and they're holding the main causeway leading up to the central capture point. Plague Drone's still messing up the Jade Archers who will need some reinforcements because they simply are not gonna be able to defend themselves against those monstrous cavalry flying in from above. But as I say that, some of those more mid-tier or elite-tier archers really can defend themselves quite well in melee. They aren't necessarily going to deal tons of damage back, but they can survive. And that's the whole point of a jade archer that has lamellar armor head to toe coated in it. You want to make sure that they can actually hold out okay and retain some kind of cohesion when they're getting busted up. So... They won't just instantly get deleted like they would in the base game, which is cool. Flesh to stone down in the choke point, keeping those peasant spearmen alive and tanky, while the main Nurgle assault comes right up the main causeway towards the Grand Bombards situated at the top of the walkway. Here come the Chaos Spawn and a host of Marauders, defenders of Nangaur, arrayed in their pike wall and pushing them back. Don't expect lots of killing power from them, but they have 88 melee defense means they'll be able to hold on for a really long time, provided they don't have their souls sucked out like a golf ball through a garden hose. Although, realistically, that is more of the Dark Prince's domain. Kinda a limp dick stream of corruption, not dealing a whole lot of damage there. Shift over to the western side where Zhao Ming and his Changyang repeaters are waiting on the wings. Poison crossbows with very good melee attack and melee defense stats, 95 armor as well. So I think those are more like Celestial Dragon Guard, Kind of like a, a replacement of those, perhaps. And another Zinch's Firestorm. Zongor's retreating so they don't get exploded by Kairos Fateweaver's own spell. There will be some friendly fire damage here, but I think the barrier should be able to take the majority of that. And wow, yeah, these choke points are going to be pretty brutal for the defenders. And that's always been one of the crazy things about Warhammer Sieges in general is that, yeah, normally being in a choke point and defending it is a huge advantage, but not necessarily when you get exploded by vortexes like Kairos Fate River can unleash. Fire Rockets, the Fire Hail Rockets, another new unit, shooting their point blank explosives directly into the Plague Drones and immediately those flyers will be sent back screaming into the void. Really great point blank volley, just completely demolish that unit. While over on the Western side, Penumbral Pendulum, from the greater demon of Zinch watching above. Look at those tiny little chaos spawn. They are so cute. They're like the size of blue horrors almost. Big duel coming in though. Iron Dragon is fed up with all this support casting and explosive damage coming out of the Lord of Change. Exalted Flamer right down the length of those formations, clearing out the gatehouse and establishing a foothold inside the city for the attackers. Fire Hail Rockets, fresh off their defeat of those plague drones. 
Moving into position to pound the flanks of this Nurgle assault. And in the main causeway, looks like Cathay might be outnumbered and about to be overwhelmed, but Iron Hail Gunner should be able to help stem the tide for at least a little bit longer. Although I'll be curious if the archers on the bridges above will actually be able to shoot in. There's so many janky things with line of sight in these vanilla siege maps that, well, and frankly, in modern maps too, it's not like they're too much better on that front. They're just so expansive in so many areas where you would think a range unit would be able to shoot, but it simply can't. And to be fair, even on flat maps, crossbows and <laughs> handgunners oftentimes just won't fire. So there's a whole host of problems on that front, but I will be curious if those two archers and gunners right there in the middle bridge are able to shoot in. It doesn't look like they've used any of their ammo so far. Wall of Flame coming out of Zhao Ming, who I believe has retreated back to the first of those central capture points. Not the main one near the uh, final plaza of Nangao, but kind of one of those initial vanguard points. Chaos Mountain looked like they're about to crack through the peasant spears, but they'll be met by some jade assault warriors directly behind them. Chaos Sorcerer Lord of Nurgle on his Chaos War Shrine has joined the fray. Does not have the Mortis effect, that is the Slaneshi variant, but does have that AoE heal, so will be super useful in supporting the push. It looks like they're about to be able to break through the defenders of Nan Gao. Blue Horrors and Tiny Little Chaos Spot moving down these side streets. It looks like they might try to outflank the main capture point, but that will take some time to develop. Blue Horrors in the vanguard for now. Shangyang repeaters are waiting. It looks like the defenders are being pretty stingy with their ammunition consumption. A few of them have fired about half their ammo thus far, but a lot of them, the elite ones, like those Shangyang repeaters are kind of waiting in reserve for a good moment to shoot into the high value stuff because they do have higher base missile damage and more AP. So it would probably be more useful against stuff like that Chaos War Shrine in the center. So Iron Hail Gunners, ooh, they're going to get some brutal volleys into these Nurgle Axemen moving up the main causeway. Some of these Halberds are holding on pretty well here. Looks like a fleshy abundance is being sent the way of the Axemen. That should get them topped off nicely, but I think the Iron Hail Gunners damage from that close should be able to outburst any heals being sent their way. Jade Halberdiers over on this side holding on against some demonic plague bears are trying to push through and the fire rockets or remnants of them anyway must have been munched up by the plague drones getting a few shots in but they're mostly not going to make too much of an impact on this battle anymore. They did their job. They killed off a full unit of plague drones. That is probably a worthy trade. I do not see a lot of ammo being shot here, and I don't know if it's a line of sight problem or simply they're not on fire at will, but it looks like this choke point is about to crumble. Doom Knights and Knights of Immolation alongside a host of Screamers and Furies about to be deployed. These Jade Archers are going to be overrun. I would like to see some of these defenders start retreating. Don't really need to leave your archers in those choke points. They're not gonna, I mean, they'll be able to hold out better than they would in vanilla, as I've said, but I think these initial waves have done what they're supposed to do if you're the defenders here. They've kind of worn down the Chaos Warriors and Demons to an extent. They've tired them out a little bit. They've gotten some good shots in. Save what you can, get them back to that main plaza and see if you can make a last stand. It's gonna be a long running battle, guys. We're like a third of the way through at best right now. So a lot more to this one. Looks like Nurgle has put a lot of their emphasis now on the Eastern side. The demons are starting to be deployed, seeing some Nurglings coming out. The exalted plague bears have meandered their way over. Lots of plague bears there coming in too. The beast of Nurgle regenning. Took a bunch of damage near the gatehouse, probably getting shot up by gunners and crossbows and the soul grinder looks like it'll also be ready to fire in with its mortar although i believe in duke's damnations it fought oh big blight boil exploding a bunch of jade assault troops chaos sorcerer lord mostly support focused but still some offensive spells that can cause serious carnage and it'll cover you in that sticky icky green goo big time fart bubble just exploding a huge section of the infantry there and man those defenders of nangao are still alive and still holding strong but you do wonder how long that will last for those chaos spawn towering 
over the defenders while Zinj pushes hard on the other side of the battlefield. Knights of Immolation and Screamers of Zinj getting stuck in. Kairos Fateweaver doing the smart thing, staying back, waiting for the right opportunity to strike. You won't really need his melee capabilities until a late game scenario. And at least for now, as has been true since the start of the battle, balance of power is in favor of the attackers. The Northern Provinces and Miao Ying are still fighting hard on the Eastern side, but Zhao Ming has retreated a lot of his forces to this capture point and looks like he's gearing up to hold it because there's a big push coming. Zinch is through over on the Western side. They'll be on their way momentarily. Some offensive match to get things kicked off. Cannons opening up and the Iron Hail Gunners as well, shutting down the remnants of those Axemen of Nurgle who just got exploded by those shotguns and blunder by from point blank range absolutely demolished. These peasant archers are still just like not shooting. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I don't know. I really have no idea. <laughs> I'm not even going to try to explain what the deal is there. It's not, it's, it doesn't really matter that much. They wouldn't be able to do enough damage to really be noticeable, especially with all the barrier that is now regenerating. But Zinch is putting a lot of their emphasis now towards the eastern side. You can see Knights of Emulation and Doom Knights are making their way over, and that might spell doom for the defenders on this side because they already had their hands full dealing with the Beast of Nurgle and the demons moving in from the front. Now they're about to be rear-charged, hammer and anvil from the skies, and that's going to be a problem. I was talking about the Nurgle Soul Grinder. It has more of a direct shot. I think it's less of a mortar and more like a really high rate of fire explosive grenade launcher that fires directly at its target. So we'll be seeing that maybe a little bit later. Seems like a lot of players are realizing this is gonna be a long battle, so they're retaining as much ammunition as possible, and that would probably be my explanation for why some of these units haven't fired all their shots yet. But damage is damage, right? Like, if you can get through the barrier, unleash. Do as much as you can. Shangyang repeaters and Jade Archer shooting in here, but it does look like Nurgle has finally cracked that nut. Zhao Ming transitioning back into human form, getting ready to cast some more offensive magic once Zinch makes their push over on the western side. Zongors, Halberds, Knights of the Severed Claw, the rest of the Doom Knights all gearing up for a big time push. Peasant Archers left behind just to soak up whatever damage they can. And they're about to be exploded by a Zinch's Firestorm. And what we're gonna see is magical tornadoes bouncing off the walls and going directly back into that unit, which kind of could have actually been dangerous there. I'm not sure that was worth it for Zinch because it was very likely some friendly fire would have gone their way. And I mean, you're just killing peasant archers while there were chaos halberds nearby. The skeins of fate are fickle and this time they roll the way of the changer. Zinch not taking too much friendly fire damage in that assault. Okay, we've got this huge aerial attack coming in from behind. Doom Knights and Screamers shutting down the remnants of these defenders here. I think Nurgle has had some difficulty pushing their way through simply because most of their troops just aren't high deep, yes. But now with this attack coming in from behind and all those flyers in a really compact ball just smacking everything from behind, that's gonna crumble real fast. And it looks like the main causeway is fully in control of Nurgle now as well, at least on this lower portion. Chaos Sorcerer Lord finishing off the remnants of these defenders of Nangal and about to make the secondary assault 15 minutes in. But Cathay is ready. Miao Ying and Zhao Ming, the brother and sister, are hanging out. They're ready for the attack. Xiang Yang repeaters getting some good volleys in over on this bridge on the western side. Kairos Fateweaver not seeing his barrier replenish. I'm not sure how barrier actually works in this mod, to be honest. It seems to replenish very slowly. But Mother Meowist activating Arcane Conduit for some more casting. We'll be seeing Talons of the Night. Really good anti-blob spell. Although most of her casting so far has been Flesh of Stone and Earthblood. Been more focused on the support and healing elements, but the DPS spells might be what we're hanging on to for the mid and late stages of the siege once those elites really start getting committed. There are some elites that have already died. Chaos Warriors have been whittled down and they're super low. Somehow the peasant long spears with glittering robe are reflecting shots back at the exalted pink horrors. That's interesting. I'm not actually, I don't actually think I've ever seen that interaction before. Really cool. Doesn't seem like the tooltip says anything about reflecting spells, but they certainly are. Didn't deal a whole lot of damage because the exalted pink horrors had their barrier up. Some iron hail gunner shots arcing their way up that causeway as well. Shangyang repeaters are about to be inundated if Zinch decides to push through, but they might be retreating. They might realize that all that range DPS and poison volleys coming in, just a little bit too much. 
Constellation of the Dragon, raw and naked, not gonna actually hit anything. I think they have enough Winds of Magic to experiment with these kind of spells and try to catch someone sleeping or napping on the job when they're not fully committed and can't retreat, but that one is going to whiff, and that's what I'm talking about when I'm saying that some of these spell lineups are agonizingly long. And I think that's honestly a good thing in some situations. Obviously, you don't want that on a spell that doesn't deal very much damage. You want to make sure that if it's a really long windup that you can be properly rewarded as the Exalted Flamer gets... Oh, oh, straight carnage here. Just immolated the entire center of this unit's formation. Jade Halberds are not feeling too good, and that Exalted Flamer's up to 173 kills. But yeah, stuff like Constellation of the Dragon, Talons of the Night, Penumbral Pendulum, Pit of Shades, you definitely have ample time to dodge if you see that icon go down which is opposed to vanilla where you can oftentimes move your troops right as you see the icon and you still can't get out of way in time and then your unit just gets utterly deleted these kill boxes are really starting to rack up quite the uh the dps for the cathay side they're putting a lot of pressure on zinch right now as they attempt to push through and get to that main plaza and the defenders have fallen silence over on the eastern side not a whole lot was retreated. The Storm Dragon Miao Ying is back at this plaza, but I'm not seeing a whole lot of her elites remaining. Probably a few all the way at the top of Nangao, which will probably be the third and final stage of this siege. In this plaza, it's basically the second assault coming in now. Zinch is moving in. Zinch is Firestorm. Interesting location for it, but kind of a brilliant one because the tornadoes will split three ways. Oh, <laughs> that could not have been more perfect. That was a really nice use of that cast. Wow, I was not expecting that at all. Normally, you don't see Vortex just thrown out into the middle of an open area, but because of the way that functions, the fact that it splits into three different directions, he basically covered all his avenues there and dealt a lot of damage to the defenders. Really nice cast from Kairos, Fate Weaver, and PD, the Power of Dragon. Wrath of the Storm and Alchemy activated Flesh of Stone. These peasant spearmen are super Saiyans. They're absolutely freaking out. Amazing stats. Every single buff possible tossed their way and... They're gonna hold against Chaos Warriors and the Knights of the Severed Claw. Zongor's piling in as well. We got a duel between Kairos Fateweaver and Zhao Ming the Iron Dragon. Barrier will protect the Lord of Change for now. Oh, that's not, that's not Kairos. That is the Knights of the Severed Claw. When they get low, I believe they can turn into a Lord of Change. So Kairos is coming in from behind, cast a blue fire change directly behind, but it looks like the dragons are about to get a big duel in with the two avatars of the changer and things are about to get real spicy here wow the knights of the severed claw their lord of change got destroyed straight pooped on disintegrating crumbling and will soon plummet out of the skies i don't know how that lord of change functions but it must have very low hp to be fair it was also fighting two of the strongest single entities in the entirety of immortal empire so good night Back to the warp for you. See you guys later. And the Knights of the Severed Claw are gone. The Halberds are gone, and so is the Avatar they transitioned into. Oracle of Eternity ward save. Protected the chicken while the dragons were trying to munch on his booty. But he did have to retreat. And now Narglings in their little form Voltron attack. Supported by the Soul Grinder. Pushing their way in from the eastern side and trying to get through the fortifications as another vortex comes down. Another Zinch's Firestorm. Cathay will notice it as the Exalted Pink Horrors rain their deluge in. But once again, they can kind of plop the vortex in the middle of the plaza. And it's likely that fire will hit something. This time, a little bit unlucky on the cast. But then again, there is a lot of space for those tornadoes to maneuver. And it's not guaranteed it'll always go exactly where you want them to go. The Plague Hulk is going to huff, and it'll puff, and it will blow your house down, stomping its way through the stockade. That will break momentarily. Here comes the Aerial Assault. Screamers coming in from the flank, shutting down the Iron Hail Gunners, and it looks like Cathay may have to retreat from this soon. There are so many units coming from so many different angles right now. It's just going to be so hard to defend this. So Zhao Ming and Miao Ying are transitioning back into human form. That was awesome. Basically completely synced up. Stream of Corruption coming in. And the cannons are in a precarious position, but they can actually switch over to their ox or cattle and drive out of there pretty fast. So we'll see if they're able to retreat that artillery and keep it for the final stage of this battle. Constellation of the Dragon, big one coming down. Plastered some Marauders and Screamers. Knights of Immolation dropped their bombs on the Cathayan defenders in that side alley, but now they're 
plunging into the thick of it. Straight into the Jade Assault troops. Miao Yang will be nearby to help support as she casts her Earth Bloods and Fleshes to Stone. A Wall of Flame about to envelop the attackers as Wrath of the Storm comes in. And Kairos Fate Weaver screams in from the flank as well. So a lot of the emphasis from both sides being put on this capture point right here. That layered defense, at least at this plaza, has definitely broken down. The range troops are enveloped by aerial flyers and a little bit redundant there, I guess. But <laughs> Zinch's Firestorm coming in. Cathay's battle lines are just non-existent at this point, and it definitely looks bad for them right now. Triple Fire Tornado arcing out, and again, missing most, but oh, coming back in. Uh, not that much damage. They're fine. Cathay's fine. I'm gonna be curious to see if they decide to retreat everything they can, or if they just hold out for as long as possible. Zhao Ming and Miao Ying are definitely backing up. They don't need to be here anymore. This plaza is completely swarmed, inundated, and overrun. But one parting gift from the Iron Dragon, a constellation, and this might be the best yet. We saw an amazing comet in that Siege of Nuln. Not gonna be quite on that level here, but big time damage and the exalted pink horrors are gone. The entire unit literally just evaporated. That was really cool. Great cast, Xiao Ming up to 200 kills and he needed that. They needed that big time because they've definitely been on the back foot for a while here. Bounce of power is in favor of the attackers still, but that helped equalize things a bit. Exalted pink horrors are no slouches in melee either. That would have been hard for Cathay to kill because they simply don't have very aggressive infantry. They can cut through demons quickly. So getting rid of all that HP in one big cast, big swing towards Cathay, although still in favor of the attackers. And we'll see if Barrier can replenish and keep these guys topped off. Miao Ying was actually unable to escape the plaza. She's been surrounded by Pestigores. Meanwhile, Knights of Immolation with a regrow sent their way by Kairos Fateweaver. They're up to 250 kills. And so far, I think the aerial support from the Plague Drones, and especially from the Screamers and the Doom Knights, are maybe the MVPs of the entire battle. That attack shifting from west to east when they came over to reinforce broke the Cathayan defenders almost immediately. Now, the Exalted Flamer has opportunities to really rack up that kill count too. It's up to 181, could it easily skyrocket past 200 and a couple more shots. Miao Ying is tired of it. She will shift back into her Storm Dragon form and perhaps go in for a duel against that Exalted Flamer. Try to get rid of it, because it has a lot of ammunition remaining, or at least a decent amount. Could cause all kinds of problems for these Cathayan infantry. But instead, well, I don't know. What is she going to do here? I would go after that Flamer. I think that Flamer has just a big neon sign over the top of it. But looks like she wants to go after the Screamers instead. Get rid of some of this aerial support. Needs to be careful, though, because if Kairos comes in and she gets fully surrounded, could be in big trouble. Seeing that Soul Grinder of Nurgle drop its uh, high speed projectile shots in, remember, not like a mortar, more like a bullet, a big, slimy, corrosive, disgusting grenade launcher of sorts. Chaos Spawn are still alive somehow. They were in the vanguard of this assault, so I'm surprised they're still around. Cannons are looking to retreat, and they might just have the mobility to escape, but man, they were cutting it real close there. Shangyang repeaters, more of them, waiting in regimented ranks up top on the hill. And the Fire Lancers have not been deployed yet, but these are Cathayan Elite that can charge in and basically explode people on the charge. I don't know exactly how their ammo works. I've seen them in action before, but never saw explosions. Duke would probably be able to explain them a little bit better than I do, but either way, their charge is impactful. They can cause all kinds of problems, and they'll have plenty of room on these large causeways to get some really good charges in. Cannons did manage to escape. There are a few defenders still out here, I guess it's really hard to retreat a pike unit like that one. They're not fast, 30 speed. And with the aerial troops coming in, it looks like the defenders of Nankau are about to make their last stand. But then again, I think they've been fighting there for a while and they've killed a lot of troops. So maybe they'll be able to hold out for a while yet. Jade archers swarmed by exalted plague bearers of Nurgle. Definitely seeing the same kind of play coming out from the demon side as well. They're holding on to their most elite troops for the late game. And that could make for a really interesting fight up at that final capture point. More exalted flame being spewed the way of these peasant long spears. It's been immolating everything in its path up to this point. But someday 
it will run out of ammunition and that day seems to be approaching. Definitely want to have it closer though. The far end of their arc gets a bit inaccurate and we're seeing a lot of that flame go over the top of the unit and not really getting much value there. Defenders of Nangao are just straight up beasting it. They are literally entirely surrounded and pinned up against the wall, which isn't the worst place for them to fight because they can use their skill tron and kind of force those points outwards in all directions. Big bombardment coming in from the Lord of Change. Jade archers are about to rout, and frankly, I would just send Kairos in and probably cause some terror there. So we're seeing that Yin and Yang, that synergy that Cathay is so well known for amongst the forces of Nurgle and Zeech, which traditionally are some of the fiercest rivals in the Chaos God Pantheon. There are only four, of course, but the basic setup is the hedonism of Slanesh versus the brutality of Korn and change of Zinch with the entropy and slow decay of Nurgle. And as the Knights of Immolation continue their bombardments from above, Fenders of Nangao are holding stalwart and strong. They've been really, really impressive this game. Both of them, both units, were put in some terrible positions and both have managed to hold out and really kill a lot of these attackers. Bounce power, 27 minutes in, is in favor of Zinch and Nurgle, the demons of the warp. Screamers have charged into the Shangyang repeaters that have deployed over on these tertiary objectives on the side. 280 kills for the Screamers. They've been beastly. And we're going to fast forward a little bit later in this battle here as the final assault comes in. Cathay has a legitimate shot to hold this capture point. They've got their Fire Lancers. They've got their Shangyang repeaters. They've got their artillery still online. Their Iron Hill gunners. And they've still got Zhao Ming and Miao Ying who have really not been forced to fight in melee very much this game. The Beast of Nurgle is in the front ranks, Flesh to Stone being sent the way of those Jade Warriors. They will hold the line while the rest of these crossbows and cavalry look to support. And here comes the Cav. So yeah, I see the charge here. I don't see any explosions from their lances, which would be really cool. But to be honest, I don't know historically how Fire Lancers really worked. I think they were more of like a, it was more of a morale tactic than anything that was to like cause all kinds of damage. Obviously, being stabbed by an explosive lance would hurt. It would cause damage, and there's the momentum and impact and weight of it as well. But I don't think it was like a massive grenade going off, because then you would just hurt your horse. The Beast of Nurgle just got destroyed, sent back to the Plague Lord's poppy fields, and I don't know if the Fire Lancers have to like manually deploy those explosives or just part of their innate animation. It says they have one ammo. I really don't know. But anyway, Chaos Spawn are coming in. Chaos Sorcerer Lord of Nurgle, Arcane Conduit activating. Still ready to cast some offensive spells. I think we'll be seeing more aggressiveness from him now that the elites are being committed. Because this is do or die at this point. This is now or never. Those big aggressive spells that deal lots of damage against the elites. Maybe the difference between winning or losing this game. Iron Dragon back into big beastly form. Fire Lancers coming in for another charge. They'll pile in on the Chaos Sorcerer Lord. Impact of those stomping hooves will be blunted somewhat by all the other units they had to pull through, but they actually managed to get through everything there, through the demons, and were maybe looking for a full surround, but now are retreating. The dragons are fighting the Knights of Immolation, realize that a full surround could be quite damaging to them, so they're all gonna awkwardly land on top of each other super gently. Just a loving caress and embrace from Zinch and Cathay, who of course love each other very much. And the Fire Lancers may be looking for a hammer and anvil here. The Flamers used all their ammo, so they're committed to melee now. The rest of these demons are piling in. We're seeing a lot more demons in this final assault than mortals, and it seems like that Rest and Hell passive has helped on that front, ensuring that they do not become exhausted. They're all fighting at peak efficiency, minus the models they've lost, of course. Knights of Immolation retreating from the Fearsome Dragon. Miao Ying still in human form, but Iron Dragon gnashing and dicing them up in its big behemoth form. Knights of Immolation are probably going to route off the map here. Another blue fire of change coming in from Kairos Fateweaver. And the Exalted Flamer has been isolated. Now, might be a little bit too little too late on that front anyway. Exalted Flamer has more than paid for itself. It did all kinds of damage to the Cathayan Defenders. And it's used all of its ammo as well. Jade Assault Crosswoman just got hit by the Whomping Stomping Trifecta of Fire Tornadoes. That was a super good firestorm from Kairos Fateweaver. He's had some great vortexes this game. And it's crazy because you don't see firestorm that often 
in vanilla. People usually go for Infernal Gateway because it's a stationary vortex. You're more likely to get all your damage. But here, in these kind of siege scenarios, where you don't necessarily know which direction the vortexes will go, having three separate ones means your likelihood of success goes way higher. And we're seeing that here. Kairos has had some amazing cast this game. But then again, so has Zhao Ming with his constellations of the dragon. Shangyang repeaters and crosswomen firing in, and Kairos has lost his overshield now. He is in big time danger. Double dragon attack. Kairos, you must flee. You are not equipped for this duel in any way, shape, or form. Run. Run for your life. He might die here. I'm not even sure he's fast enough to escape at this point. There's no net or slow that Miao Ying or Zhao Ming can utilize to kill him, but actually the Iron Dragon has retreated because he wants to go into human form and start casting more spells on these blobs that are developing. The Plague Bears of Nurgle and the Exalted Plague Bears are some of the healthiest infantry remaining. So, it might be time to cast a Constellation of the Dragon while Miao Ying finishes the duel with the Changer of Fates. Another huge bombardment coming in. Could that kill off these Plague Bearers entirely? No, they have way too much HP and this one was not overcast, but still, sizable damage, about 5,000 or so, and that'll help. Crossbows are still online. Still some Jade Assault Infantry, which can train blow for blow with Plague Bearers. I don't know if they'd beat them. Probably wouldn't cut through them all that quickly, but they could hold the line at least while the cannons fire in and the crossbows and repeaters continue their deluge. But yeah, Zhao Ming retreating over the top of the castle. Kairos Feetweaver stabilized, did not die. The Chaos Sorcerer Lord is trying to flee from these Fire Lancers, and they are up to a thousand damage value done, but only have three kills. So they're actually going after the single entities. Interesting. I don't know if that's kind of their role or what they're best at, but they may die here because they've been swarmed by Nurgle Plague Bearers, and this might be their doom. I know for sure you want to keep them cycle charging, so if they get bogged down, they will be cut down, and yeah, these are exalted, so this fight is over for the Cav. They will die. This will be their end. Kairos casting a regrowth on himself. That'll get him healed up. So maybe a missed opportunity to kill the greater demon of Zinch, but they took a lot of damage there, perhaps more importantly. Big losses on that balance of power. Their lead might be slipping away here. Cannons are now shooting into the important single entities. Soul Grinder of Nurgle taking those to the noggin. And it looks like they might have run out of some steam, some impetus to get up this hill. Perhaps the Nurgle Artillery, that Flem Bombardment Cannon, might be enough to turn the tide. We're getting into the dog days of summer. The Doldrums, who's going to pull this one out? Can Zinch and Nurgle finish the job? They've done a great job pushing all the way to the final capture point. But their assault has been stymied for now and they need those Exalted Plague Bearers to get into the thick of the fighting. The biggest problem I'm seeing for Zinch and Nurgle, for the Forces of Chaos, is that they still have to deal with effectively a full health Zhao Ming and Miao Ying, and even if those drop low, I don't know how much Winds of Magic they have remaining, probably not a lot, but there might be a little bit of healing remaining on their side too. And if the Chaos Sorcerer Lord and Kairos are effectively out of the fight because they're so low, and have used so much Winds of Magic this game, then it might be really hard to get through these elite defenders. So Kairos is going in. He's trying to cause some terror routes, but those are Shangyang repeaters. They are elite. They have high morale, high leadership, and decent defense stats, a lot of armor, so won't be easy to cut through them. And I think the attackers are missing some AP here as well. The remnants of the Pestigors charging into the Jade Crosswoman, who will not retreat. They'll hold the line. Makes perfect sense. They're out of ammunition. Kairos is gone. He was sent back to the warp, and with it, the chances of Nurgle and Zinch's ascension might be dissipating. That's a big loss. No more offensive magic from the Zinch side, anyway. We'll see if Nurgle has anything up his sleeve. Remnants of the Fire Lancers charging in. Chaos Sorcerer Lord heal capped eons ago, probably 10 or 15 minutes ago at the latest. Making his push up the hill. But Miao Ying and Zhao Ming shifting back into dragon form. And they're looking to end this one right here, right now. Right here, right now. Iron Dragon coming in for an attack while Talons of the Night from Miao Ying looks to carve out the heart of the remaining attackers. Chaos Sorcerer Lord is routing. That'll leave a Flame Bombardment Plague Hulk 
as the only real linchpin alongside these exalted plague bearers. And the balance of power is like 90-10 in favor of Cathay now. And the defenders look like they're going to hold on, but at what cost? They have almost nothing left. What a torn, brutal, and bloody affair. But still, Nan Gao will stand. The demons do not have the numbers to take it. And this battle is over. Double Dragon Assault. They're going to go after the Soul Grinder. And they're going to put the nail in the coffin of this demonic invasion. So once again, the city that has never fallen will remain standing strong. And that was an impressive defense from the Cathayan players here. Duke and some Portuguese Bean making Cathay proud with that defense. And the Dragon Emperor is watching on quite pleased. Although he might be saying something like, Give me back my legions! Because that was uh, about as pure as a battle could possibly get. Dragon brother and sister, the siblings, are still alive. Demonic army crumbles. That'll be the end. Wow, great battle. 42 minutes. So, PD the power dragon on the Apostles of Change. Chef on Septic Claw. The Duke on the Western Provinces and some Portuguese being on the Northern Provinces. 3,000 value for Kairos Fate Weaver, mostly from those fire storms. Exalted Flamer got a bunch of kills. Zongors did okay. Flamers did okay. Exalted Pink Horrors did okay. Uh, the Knights of the Severed Claw didn't do so hot. When they shifted to that Lord of Change, I was surprised how quickly they died. Zhao Ming, of course, the MVP on the Western Provinces side. Almost 4,000 damage value and some really good constellations of the dragons. Miao Ying was more focused on a support role this game. Didn't get crazy kill count or anything, but still probably got very good value because she almost killed off Kairos Fate Weaver. 3,000 value from one of the defenders of Nan Gao. Must have been killing off some Chaos Spawn and yeah, that Shield Throne formation right next to the wall. Just fighting with their backs to it and killing off all kinds of Demonic Legions. But both defenders were cut down. Neither unit survived. And Shangyang Repeaters and some of the crossbows got okay value as well. So really interesting defense. I love seeing players utilize an entire siege map because you are never going to see battles like that in campaign and obviously these kind of battles are really hard to organize and they're kind of a rare treat nowadays but pleasure to cast it pleasure to bring it to you all and i hope you all enjoyed it so see you all in the next one any pride signing out for now have a good one peace